In this video, I'm going to show you how to account for depreciation when there's been a change in estimate. So a company might revise its estimate for the expected useful life of an asset. For example, a company might purchase equipment and think that it's going to last for 12 years. But later, they might say, you know what, actually the estimated useful life is going to be 15 years. And so that's going to change the amount of depreciation that's recorded annually. Also, the company might revise its estimate for the asset's residual value, aka the salvage value. That's the value that the, the asset is expected to have at the end of its useful life when you're done depreciating it. So if this happens, if you have a change in estimate, then what you're going to do is this. You're going to use the revised figures, the new salvage value, uh, the new useful life number, to calculate the depreciation going forward. And I'm going to show you how to do that with an example with some actual numbers. But also, you do not restate the financial statements for the prior periods. You just take the revised figures, you calculate the new annual depreciation, and you move on. You don't have to do a restatement. So let's do an example. Let's say there's a company, Invisible Girlfriend, that purchases equipment. Okay, this is property, plant, and equipment, so they're going to depreciate it, and they're expecting it will have a useful life of 20 years, and that the salvage value of this equipment, so when the residual value at the end of 20 years, would be $5,000. So assuming the company uses straight-line depreciation method, which we're going to assume here, the annual depreciation would be $4,750. So you just take the $100,000 cost, minus the $5,000 residual value, divide that by the estimated useful life, you get to $4,750 a year. Now, here's the change. Here's the, re re the revision. After two years, so they've taken this amount of depreciation twice. So this times two would be $9,500. So the net book value of the asset at this point is $100,000 minus this times two. So that'd be $90,500. We'll come back to that in a minute. The company revises its estimates. Okay, so we're going to have a couple changes here. The company now believes that this asset has 23 years remaining for its useful life. Now, remember, it's already been two years. Okay, we're saying after two years. So in total, that would be 25 years total useful life. So, okay, so it's been two years, but now they're saying 23 more years to go. Okay, hope I was clear there. Now, they believe that the residual value, before they thought it would be 5000 now they are saying they think it will be $16,900. So we got 23 years remaining useful life, okay, and we have a residual value now of $16,900, okay. So what is going to be the annual depreciation going forward? Let's calculate this. First, as I noted before, the net book value of the asset after two years is $90,500. How did I get that? Remember, the initial cost of the asset was $100,000. I showed you how they calculate the annual depreciation before the re revisions, which was $4,750. Two years had passed, so they'd already taken this amount of depreciation twice. Okay, so $100,000 minus this, which is $9,500 is 90,500. That is the net book value at the end of year 2, okay? The cost of the asset minus $9,500 of depreciation, okay? So you're at 90,500. This is the amount that we're going to pay attention to going forward, 90,500. So now, we calculate the annual depreciation with the res the revised figures, the new information. We're going to take 90,500, not 100,000, because we've already taken $9,500 of depreciation, okay? So we're going to take 90,500, the net book value, and then we're going to subtract the salvage value, aka the residual value, okay? But it's the new residual value, not the old figure. The old figure was 5,000. Now we're going to subtract $16,900, okay? And we're going to divide this by the remaining years and the remaining useful life, which was 23 years. Because we said, okay, it's been two years, but after it's been two years, they say, you know what, there's going to be 23 more years of this asset. So net book value, okay, after two years, right, when they make the change, minus the new residual value, divided by the remaining useful life. And that gives us a figure of $3,200. So this is going to be the annual depreciation, again, using straight line, $3,200 a year. Now, you remember before they were taking $4,750 of depreciation a year, and now the amount of depreciation is lower. Why is that the case? Well, they have a higher uh, estimated useful life, 
but also they have a higher residual value. So by increasing, if management increases its, its estimated useful life and the estimated residual value, that will uh, end up in uh, lower annual depreciation. Okay, now let's just check to see that we did this right. Here's a way you can check. The initial cost of the asset was $100,000. Now they took $9,500 of depreciation for the first two years before the revised figures, okay? And then for the next 23 years, they are projected to take $73,600 of total depreciation. That's $3,200 a year times the 23 remaining years. So if you take the initial cost minus the depreciation for the first two years and minus the depreciation expected for the next 23 years, you should get 16900 which is the residual value. That's the figure we're supposed to get because we're not going to fully depreciate this thing down to zero. We're just going to depreciate it down to its residual value.